Hi, so we're going to look at Frenet heaters again. Now, the hardest thing about these Frenet heaters is actually fitting the two bodies together, finding them and making them so they have quite a close tolerance. Now, if you happen to be lucky and find two things that have that close to tolerance, then it's a piece of cake to make these things. Now, you might remember this. It's a food canister, and I made sterling engines out of them in previous videos, and they're just a stainless steel canister. As it happens, they're just the right size for that. That's a half litre paint tin, and that half litre paint tin goes in quite nicely. So if you have two canisters like that, it takes next to no time at all to make these heaters. I made this one, incidentally, in less than an hour. Now, all I actually did was mark up the centre of the paint can, and the paint can lid and drill through a six millimeter hole. And what I did in this bottom six millimeter hole is put a, a dome nut. And if you look inside, you can see that I just drilled through, put a bit of um, silicon sealant to stop anything going in there, screwed it down, and that's the bottom made. Now the top, I did exactly the same thing, only used a long six mil bolt and centered it, drilled through, and screwed that bolt through. Now I've got a lathe so I turned that down to fit uh, what I'm going to drive it with. If you don't have a lathe it doesn't really matter, it'll just drive off a drill. You don't really need a lathe to do it. And once you close that up then that makes a nice sealed container. Now this one has absolutely nothing done to it at all. It's just glued to this bit of board so that I can spin it. Then I've attached a thermocouple to it and you can see the thermocouple reading there on that screen. It's at 14 degrees and all I actually have to do now is put a little bit of oil in and put the lid on. Now the lid comes like that, it's a bit of um, acrylic uh, on the steel rim and what I did with that was santer it again, drill a hole through it and then I put a piece of plastic on there that was at 22mm to take this bearing and just a bit bigger than 8mm so the bearing came through free. Now all I have to do is slot that on there and we're ready to go. So if I fill this up with oil and slot that on and attach the Dremel. Okay, the poor little gravel couldn't cope with it. There was just far too much resistance in the oil. So I was going to use the hand drill. Then I thought, hey, why not just move the pillar drill and use that instead? Now, this only turns at about 980 RPM, something like that, because it's on the setting for soft metals. So it's going to turn about 980 RPM. I've set it on there. Same thing, thermocouples there, drills attached, and I'm going to start the um, stopwatch. We'll turn it on and watch what happens to the temperature setting. Okay, five minutes later it's at 27 degrees and like I said this is set really low so what I'm going to do is change the setting and we'll see if we can get it faster. Okay, so I was wrong, actually I had it on its lowest setting which is 580 rpm so it got up to 27 degrees in five minutes at 580 rpm. Now I've got it at its highest setting which is 2600 rpm and let's see what it does then. Okay, I'm going to stop it there because uh, it's had three minutes and at 2600 RPM it's gone up to 46 degrees. It's getting a bit too hot to hold. I have to hold it because it'll spin the whole thing unless I hold it as well. But there you go, a really simple Frenet heater that will run off a drill and get up that temperature actually really quite quickly. Now I'm not surprised it's more efficient than the other one I made because like I could have said before, these squat broader shapes are much more efficient than those long thin shapes. Anyway, how to make a Frenet heater in less than an hour and heat it up to 50 degrees in three minutes. I hope you enjoyed watching and thank you very much.